Hello, welcome to Mornings in the Allotment, and again, welcome to my kitchen. Okay. Some of my colleagues and I got together and we're doing a, an intercultural dinner. And um, I wasn't going to go, but then I thought, oh, why not? Um, and so I didn't have much time to come up with something to make. Um, and things that um, I know from my childhood, so what would be cultural to the area that my parents came from, Nothing really works out well, but I have a recipe that is from Hannah's great-grandmother, from her French great-grandmother, from her Norman, Norman great-grandmother, and that's tarte à la moutarde. That's um, a tart or a pie uh, with mustard and tomatoes. And I figured I would show you what I'm doing because these tomatoes, one of them was harvested uh, at the end of October, and the other three were harvested on November 21st. That was the day I filmed uh, my tour, and I said that I would have to clean out the tomatoes um, that were still in the ground. And uh, one of the two of the plants, uh, Nonna Antonina, they were the only ones that really survived. Uh, they still had some completely green fruit on them. And I figured, why not? They looked fine. Um, why not take them inside and I put them on the windowsill and this is what three weeks later and I did cut this one open just to see because all the plants around it had blight so um, even if I can't tell uh, by looking at them I do taste test them all before I cook something with them just in case because blight if a plant has blight you can taste it you can taste it in the tomato if the tomato if the tomato has blight, you can taste it. <laughs> okay. Um, so one of my colleagues is vegan, uh, so I'm not doing the recipe exactly as I would normally make it. Normally I would make the, um, the crust myself. Um, in this case, I bought a flaky crust that's vegan. Um, I have no idea how this will turn out, but, you know, Inga, this is for you. <laughs> um... Just see, it's kind of tucked under here. Not sure why exactly. Ah, oh, here. Um, it's a bit too small for the dish, so I'm going to have to stretch it a bit. But I'm too lazy to roll it out, so I'm just going to stretch it by hand when I put it in there. This is a bit fiddly the paper went over the edge okay yeah, so you can see it's not quite wide enough but normally as those of you who bake will know um, you can stretch it a bit and it will be fine bake one yeah it's too long as well I'm going to cut off, um, I'm going to cut it into shape and then we'll see whether we'll use the rest for this or we'll make something else with it. Okay. Um, well, as I said, normally, well, Hannah's great-grandmother also bought the, bought the crust and she used um, the same kind of crust as well. Um, but I've seen recipes that call for all kinds of different uh, crusts. So I guess you can probably do just whatever you feel like using. Yummy. Yummy. I'm not sure. Are you going to eat from it? You don't like mustard, do you? Mustard. Um, senf. Mustard? You're not a huge fan of mustard, I think. Oh, no. no. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what? You want a piece of the... That's disgusting. No. Or you can taste test it, actually. You can tell me what it tastes like. Because there's no butter in it. 
I'm not going to pre-bake this. Oh no, that's disgusting. Ugh. That's disgusting. What, the dough? Yeah, it's just, there's no butter in it. But I'm sure it'll taste fine once we... <laughs> Can you help me, please? <laughs> There you go. Thank you. So it's not disgusting? A little bit. Okay. Um, so we're using some mustard here. Old fashioned type with the whole grains. A l'ancienne. French mustard, of course, for a French recipe. So yeah, what I was going to say, Hannah's uh, family, French family, is from Normandy. But I've seen this recipe in other parts of France as well. It's those two tablespoons. And I'm just going to spread that across the bottom of the crust. So no need to spread it uh, on the sides. You just want it spread evenly. On the bottom. Okay. So Hannah, do you remember much about Mami? Who made this? No, not really. You don't you don't remember eating this there either, do you? No. Okay. Yeah, she used to love mustard. She loved the, to eat this. And then at some point she decided she didn't like mustard anymore. So. <laughs> okay. So, um this one is already tested. Um I test I taste tested this and you want to do thin slices. And when I showed Hardy what I was going to make, he said, hey, why are you using our garden tomatoes for your colleagues? Why don't we eat them ourselves? Well, I'm pretty sure that we'll be fine eating just... <laughs> Hannah says the mustard smells. Um, Not likely. I think, I think um, one of them won't be enough, but two probably will. I actually went and bought um, other tomatoes just in case because I hadn't tested this before. And what I'm also going to do, as I said, all the other tomatoes had blight. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to taste from another part of the tomato just in case. <clears throat> Just in case. Now they're not as good as if they had vine ripened, of course, but um, they really are still better than most of the tomatoes you get at this time of year in the supermarket. What? Tomato. She wants more tomato. <laughs> so yeah, Hannah. Hannah um, is learning English in school, and um, classically, classically in Germany they start with. Um, British English, so what are these called? Uh, what? what are these called in English? What do you call them? What? This fruit. Tomato. In English. Tomato. No, what do you what did you just call it? Before I said tomato. Tomato. Yeah. So I keep taste testing them just in case, but I think I'm being over, over careful because um, there's so much water in tomatoes that if, if there's something wrong with them, you taste it all over the fruit and not just in, in one area. It's also because, um, th that's also, also the reason if you, if you have a... Um, Tomato that is um, starting to rot, you just throw the whole thing out. You don't just um, keep parts of it. You don't cut away the bad parts and eat the rest. You just throw out the whole thing. Okay. Um, how am I going to do this in the middle here? Maybe like this. I'm just going to tuck these last pieces under. Um, 
Maybe not. Maybe I'll just push it to the side. Okay, let me just wash my hands. Okay, um, I'm preheating the oven. You don't really need to, but I'm preheating the oven to 180 degrees Celsius. Ah. And now I realized I forgot something. I'm actually going to have to take the tomatoes off again. Why? Because um, the cheese goes underneath the tomatoes. In this case, you want it melting. You don't want it browning. That doesn't make sense. Uh, you don't want it browning. Yes, um, I want. You want it melting. Yes, and I also do. in this case, it's... Yes, I do. <laughs> it's In this case, it's not a real cheese. It's a vegan cheese uh, made from lentils mainly. And I don't know yeah. how it's going to react. I don't know how fast it how fast it melts. So I really don't want to risk anything. So um, 50 grams of well, normally I would be using something like Gruyere. So, but any type of hard cheese. This is meant. Um, it looks like cheese. This is meant to be used like Parmesan. It looks Parmigiano. like, par like Parmesan. Parma Parmigiano. Yeah. Um, it has lentils and coconut oil, water, and um, what's it called? Um, the yeast. Um, the yeast that you use um, to get the umami taste if you're vegan. Can't remember. I'm sure I'll think of it once Mushrooms. the video is over. No, 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 no. Uh, yeast, ne Hefe. Nair Hefe in German. <laughs> Nair Hefe in German, I don't know what it is in English. I All right, so this ended up in the oven for about 30 minutes and it's looking yummy, really good. Yummy, says Hannah. Um, I'm now going to wrap it up. I'm going to put this um, silicone baking sheet on top carefully, stretch it around, wrap it up in a towel and take it with me and hopefully keep it at least lukewarm until we start eating. It's not far to the office. I only have about three or four minutes by car. By car? By car, yes. We're taking the car. Do you mind? Yes! <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're taking the car. Oh, if I God. end up having a glass of wine or two, I can, always, God. I can always leave the car there and get it on foot tomorrow morning. Okay. Thanks for watching today. Um, I hope you're inspired to try new... Subscribe! I hope you're inspired to try new varieties of tomatoes because this one as i said nonna antonina if you're within the eu i'll happily send you some seeds uh in the uk unfortunately or in uh, switzerland or the us or other parts of the world i can't um but yeah they're definitely something we're going to be growing again hope you enjoyed this as hannah said subscribe if you haven't already there will be more cooking videos in winter because there's just not as much gardening but I will also be starting a new series of what to sew in, in January. And I have quite a few ideas for this upcoming year. But as I said, for now, there will be lots of cooking videos as well with produce from the plot. All right. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.